Good morning. Glad to be here to talk to you guys about a very exciting subject, Dispatch Optimizer. And we're going to get right into that. It's really exciting. But first, let's talk a little bit about Tenasca. So I've been with Tenasca 22 years now, started in 2000. Uh, they started out as a uh, development company, developing power plants. Started with the 7EA technology, combustion turbines, combined cycle. Built two of those plants, developed a few others. Then we got into the uh, 7FA version, combined cycle with the D11. We've had a partnership with uh, GE for over 20 years now, so worked well with them across, across that time span. And somewhere along the line, we got into the natural gas marketing uh, arena. And uh, I think they're about 30 years old now, but the natural gas has been very good to us. We're, I think, number two marketer in the North America. So that's been really good for us. The power marketing, uh, we also got into that about 25 years ago, and that's, I think we're about 30, 30th uh, biggest in North America. So we built several, we built five, three on one, seven FA with D11 steam turbines, combined cycles. And uh, somewhere along the way, we decided, you know, we can, we can operate these better than NACE or as well as NACE can. So we took over that function, and that's kind of where I came into it. I went from the engineering group in Tenasca over to the operations group and uh, just started operating them. It was interesting to find out when I was uh, in Burns McDonald a long time ago designing power plants. We'd go from one plant to the next plant and just keep designing stuff. Well, with Tenasca, I was able to stick around and find out all the stuff that didn't work at the power plant. You, you, you spent four years just fixing stuff that you thought worked the way you thought it would work, and it didn't. But a very exciting time for about four years. So, so we talked about natural gas marketing, power marketing, and operations. Now I'm on the technical services side, which is not to be confused with IT. We get a lot of IT calls, but uh, we call it technical services. My group, I've got five people, two chemical engineers, uh, a turbine expert from GE. We swiped him from GE several years ago. We got two controls guys. So our group is technical support for all of Tenasca. So last thing I'd have to say uh, with Tenasca, we're based in Omaha. That's our corporate. We've got two plants in Texas, plant in Alabama, Kyle, uh, Oklahoma, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and we're, we're across the board. But let's talk a little bit about the plant that uh, Dispatch Optimizer is being used on. So our Frontier Generating Station is, it's a three-on-one, 7FA technology, DOT03. It's a combined cycle, it's D11, 400 megawatt steam turbine. Our capacity is 844 megawatts. It's located about 30 miles east of College Station, Texas. And it's kind of unique. We've got three plants that generate in two grids. The Frontier Station can supply power to the ERCOT grid and can supply power to the MISO grid. So that's a unique function of that and pretty reliable plant, so, and it was built in 2000. One of our, it was our first three-on-one 7FA group. So the way Tenasca worked in the very beginning is very conservative. They came into power purchase agreements or energy conversions agreements where you'd go out to a, a client, a Shell or an Exelon, a big company, and say, you know what, we'll build a power plant and you give us natural gas, we'll turn it into power, give it back to you and you pay us a fixed fee. So that was our mode of operation for all of our power plants for 20 years, uh, specifically at uh, Frontier 20 year contract, it was fixed. We were on a steady income and then that power purchase agreement ran out and very difficult to find those nowadays as probably a lot of you know. But uh, we went into the merchant market. We got thrust into the merchant market arena and that's where you basically have to you bid into the market every day. You, it is much higher risk. You're responsible for your reliability, but there's a lot more potential for reward. You get, when the market's good, you get to take advantage of that. So we needed to really take advantage of the uh, market volatility in uh, ERCOT, and that's one of the tools we used at the dispatch optimizer. So here's dispatch optimizer. All right, it's, some of you are familiar with it, some of you are not probably, but what it allows you to do when you're running the unit, when you're running at full load operation on a CT, 
uh, your firing temperatures hot, your components are getting driven pretty hard. And as you go down and load, uh, Dispatch Optimizer allows that firing temperature to be turned down. It allows the components to bank life. You're not as hard on them as you normally would during normal operation. So uh, full load operation, there's your exhaust temperature, very hot, and you come down this red line, that's normal operation. Dispatch Optimizer allows the components to run at a lower temperature, less dynamics, um, easier on it. And they, the GE software then banks that life and it says, all right, you've run at this lower load, this colder load, you can now have free peak hours when you need it. You push that red button and then you can take advantage of higher power prices. And this is the exhaust temperature, uh, high temperature at low loads. And again, here's the blue line that gives you the lower operating uh, dynamics. So that's dynamics in a nutshell. I'm not an IT guy, I'm not a software guy, but that's the best I can explain it to the layman. So then, let's see, implementation, this, this was an interesting one, and this is why I think John wanted me to come up and talk. We spent a lot of time uh, getting this implemented. Tenask is very conservative, they're very uh, risk avert. So first thing we needed to do was find Dispatch Optimizer. When we, uh, when we reno renegotiated the long-term service agreement with GE, we uh, didn't really know what it was. It's like, all right, fine, we'll, we'll do the Dispatch Optimizer. And it sat for a period of time where we didn't really do anything with it. It was there, and John would call me every once in a while and say, hey, you guys really should try this out. So it was my job to get this implemented. So we needed to, we needed to work with GE and GE's technical group to get it installed. We worked with the plant INE techs to get it installed. Very, very effective installation. But the next thing was to uh, get the plant staff convinced that uh, this new fancy red button we got to go peak fire was not gonna trip the plant, not gonna cause us uh, downtime. So we spent a lot of time working with the plant staff, had tests where the power wasn't crazy high. It's like, all right, push the button. If there were any bugs in it, we worked them out. But we got to the point where the plant staff could be comfortable pressing that button. So then you move on to the next one, which is the uh, asset management group at Tenasca and uh, Tenasca Power Services, the marketers. So they're the ones we meet every day in the morning and say, all right, how are we gonna go into the market the next day? Uh, what are we gonna bid for the day ahead? What are we gonna bid for the real-time pricing? So forth and so on. But we needed to convince them that this new fancy red button, we could use that and we could utilize these peak fire, uh, this, these peak fire hours. And when the power prices are, and in ERCOT it gets up to $5,000 per megawatt, when it's normally around 50. But when it's up at $5,000 a megawatt, the last thing you want to do is press a fancy red button and trip the unit, because the liability is huge. So it took a long time to work through that and convince them that this was a red button they could actually press. And once we got them all comfortable, then it was just a matter of, all right, how do we, uh, how do we determine when to use this red button? Um, got to the point where, and GE works with that, works on that too. They can give a, they've got a software that produces, says, how many banked hours do you have? When should you bank? When should you use these? What's the power, power price that the trigger should take place on this? So very, very helpful in that one. These are a month of digits here. So you can see uh, we went probably five months there without using it. That's when John was calling me and telling me to, we should probably do something with this. So you can see where the transition came in and we started banking more hours. Now we're to the point where we're really utilizing this and uh, very effectively, I think. So some of the lessons learned, results, future, uh, is if you're evaluating a dispatch optimizer from a cost perspective and from a revenue perspective, uh, GE's got it estimated about two to $5 million per 32K interval. Tenasca, we, it's a crystal ball down in ERCOT, so we kind of said, all right, we'll try it out, we'll try it out for a year. We basically came to the conclusion that yes, this pays for itself many times over, and it was a really good deal with us. So for future utilizations, we're installing that now at our Oklahoma facility, which is two two-on-ones, 7FA technology, and we're then now looking at 
and that's in also in the ERCOT uh, market. And we're also looking at PJM. We've got a plant, a three-on-one up there that we're looking at putting dispatch optimizer on that also. So hopefully this time around, it's gonna be a whole lot easier to convince them that this red button's not volatile. And uh, we, we've been through the ringer once already, so I think we can get this produced and, and put through real easy. The last, uh, last column, the middle column on there just talks about how ERCOT has been growing like crazy with wind, with uh, solar coming in, with new renewables coming in, it's quite volatile market. So dispatch optimizer is a very useful tool in that market. And that's all I've got for you. Any questions? Hey Dave, a, a lot of people have talked about uh, the importance of change management. What lessons have you guys learned from the Frontier plant as you are now rolling this out in your Oklahoma uh, plant? <clears throat> Uh, it's a good question. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. But uh, <laughs> lessons we've learned, I mean, it's just a matter of being able to get ahead of the plant staff, working with the plant staff and just saying, and just, hey, we've done this at Frontier. We've already done this. And the, the bugs that we worked out of the system, I think both GE and Tenasca know how to deal with those. But it's just a matter of looking at what we've learned lessons-wise and, and implementing those. So, so Dave, I think a lot of plants that I've spoken to, they have the same challenge where they've looked at this solution, but they've got a plant staff that is also very risk adverse. Yeah. So what was the turning point for the plant staff that they said they acknowledged that the juice is worth the squeeze? Yeah, no, that's a great question. That's what we dealt with for, that was what I dealt with my team for a long time. It was, all right, guys, we've got this software. We've got to try it. So let's figure out a time when the market's not crazy and we can just try it out, get it to the point where it works. So you don't want to try it out. You want to test it out when the market's crazy. You want to test it out when the market's nice and easy. So three or four tests like that get to the point where they can actually push the button and be comfortable that it's going to work. That was the turning point. David, uh, G's estimate for the value of the solution was somewhere in the order of two to five million over a 32K interval. What is your assessment? Is it in the right range or do you think the value is somewhere different? <clears throat> That's the GE number. Um, from our perspective, it's hard to tell. Uh, I think it's gonna, I, I personally think it's worth more than that in the ERCOT market. I don't know how much it's going to be worth in the PJM market, but it really depends on a lot of different circumstances. The plant configuration, um, the market that you're in, what's your dispatch profile. But GE is very helpful in being able to walk you through those valuations. So I'd work closely with them and with your marketing group to find out what it's worth. I was just curious. Um, I, I know one of, the, one of the concerns that it was balancing off was the, um, the risk to the, the parts running in the machine and balancing that off with the, uh, the cold load path. Uh, have, you, have you seen any, any difference in the, like the bore scopes or when the parts came out? Was there any? any... <clears throat> Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I think the system works the way they advertise it. So uh, you can't tell much different. It's not, you don't get in the unit and say, wow, you're tearing this thing up or anything like that. It's just normal, normal wear and tear on it. Awesome, glad to hear, thanks. Sure, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.